21st October 1905 by George Meredith. If a hundred years have passed, and here is the name of peace the nation's fears, as with a hand laid over sea, to thunder through the foeman's ears, defeat before his blast of fire, lives in the immortality that poets dream and nobles souls desire. Never did nations need to evoke hero like him for aid, where the continent was cannon smoke or peace and slavery. This one eye reflecting nature, with one man, he sea haunt and a mortal stroke. The war worn warrior eye and battles won, and to be laughing well as well as he is country, we may grieve with hand on steel or passing bell, nigh on the swing, for prelude sweet to the music heard when his last breath hung on its ebb beside the knell, and victory in his ears and gracious stiff. A day of glory, day of tears, day of a people bowed as one. We hold across those hundred years the land flesh of gun at gun. How be their pride, our love be revered. What pall or cloud or calm or sun that day to be as a ref, the end achieved. Joy that no more with murders thrown, the ancient rivals bark apart. No Nelson to brave France is shown, a hero after her own heart. And he now scanning with quick race, to whom for life as Galaf was thrown, would now his sister spirit to embrace. A roar through the tall twin elm trees, a George Meredith. A roar through the tall twin elm trees, a mustering storm betrayed. South and seas to beloved over the water's weight. And there the steady deluge in which I strove to doze, Hingle night at my window the knock of a winter rose. A rainy rose of winter, an outcast it must pine, And of her bosom outcast am I, dear lady mine. Ask is love divine, a George Meredith. Ask is love divine, voices all are I. Question for the sign, there's a common sigh. O grief for all years, love for go, quit of scars and tears, but no, no, no. At the close, by George Meredith, to thee, dear God of mercy, both appeal, straightway sound the call to arms. For knowest, the black spot in each embattled host, spring of a bottle stream, later will reveal, now is it red artillery and white steel. Till on the day we ring the victor's boast, the tis thy chosen towers uppermost, where were rejected grovels under heel, so in all times of man's discons insane, to brood its strength and craft combining strike, even as the god of armies has fell below. But it were close the end of thy domain, the god of mercy, and of lion like he tore the fallen, returning was his foe. At the funeral, a George Meredith, a sacred body bier, the tenement of its strong sound or ranked of gods elect, her heart upon the people's heart she spent. Hence as she royal stars a loads that to direct. The peace is hers, for more lands of praise, majestic virtues o'er her day unseen. I love the name of womanhood she raised, and gave in readings to the title queen. Autumn Even Song by George Meredith A long cloud edged with streaming grey soars from the west, and red leaf moans of it away, showing the nest, a blot among the branches bare, where's the cry of outcasts in the air. Swift little breezes starting chill pan down the lake. A crow flies from the yellow hill, and in its wake, a bifft line of the boring rocks, steel surface to the light river looks. Pale in the panes of the old hall gleams a lone space between the sunset and the squall, and on its face mournfully glimmers to the last. Great oaks grow mighty minstrels in the blast. Pale rain red at roadway shine, and the green light behind the cedar and the pine. Come thundering night. Black and broad earth of hordes of storm, for me yon valley cottage beckons warm. By morning twilight, by George Meredith, night like a dying mother, I a young offspring day, the words are dreamily piping, and I'm my love, my darling, the night is life ebbed away, away beyond our reach, the sea that has cast us pale on the beach, weeds of the weeds of the peagles, but the ever long timorous garuda than sand, sway with the song of the sea to the land. Earth secret, but George Meredith, not solitary in fields we find a secret open, but one page's wear, the plain is such as children's bell and share with burden beast, raised letters for the blind, not ever troubled passions toss her mind, and derbed cities can the key we bear, it hangs with bows so high the viva fair, close at the threatening nature of our kind, we hearing history speak of what men were, and have become our wise, the gain is great, and the vision and solidity, it lives, it had a thought of life apart from her, solidity and vision, loose the state for earth, it gives the milk the spirit gives. 
England Before the Storm by George Meredith The David is the night of days, of cannon fire for sun ablaze. We spy for many billows lift, England still this tidal drift. What she to saint it for for the woe, a space before the thunder's flood, that never of its hour might know, spare her the tears of blood. Asleep upon her ancient deeds, she hugs her vision before her breeds, and counts the manifold increase of treasure the fruits of peace. What curse on earth so provident, and a dread trumpet shatters rest. As erect she knows, yet smiles content, as cradle rocked from breast. She imperious to the Lord of hosts, a veil of offspring boasts. Mind is that known land, main is seated prayer as act of prey. No more great heart may guard the home, safe eyed and armed and skilled to cleave, and swallow a wave of shroud of foam, may see no distant heath. Where stand to be her sacrifice, the sons this mother flings like dice. To face the odds and brave fates, as in those days of starry dates, when cannon cannons counterblast to vacant, muzzle muzzle bowed, lines wolf of smoke for mast, its fighting wreck outrode. Grace and love, by George Meredith, to flow and fold in crystal the vases she a love fills daily, mindful but of one, and close behind pale morn she like the sun, priming our world with light, pours sweet to see, clay water in the cup, and into me the image of herself. And it being done, choice of what blooms around the fair garden run, and climbers on creepers of a tree, she ranges with unerring fingers fine, to harmony so vivid that through sight I hear, I have a heavenliness to fold beyond the senses, where such love as mine, such grace as hers, should the strange fates withhold, I stay more from her and me unite. Internal Harmony by George Meredith A short of worthiness we do not read competitors, we rather give them hail and greeting and the list where we may fail. Must if it be an aim beyond the head, a better as my masters, poorly fit by their sustainment I like where should scales and rocky steps between the mountain way. Meanwhile the marker half and I will wit, so that it draw the breath of finer air, station is naught, the footways loyal strewn, the rivals tightly belted for the race. God speak to them, the place is here or there, and the pride is that among them I have place, but the key is instrument and you. John Jackland by George Meredith A wicked man is bad enough on earth, though the baleful lustre of a chief was pledged to tyranny. A star of turf darkly looming a nation's grief, how many men have worn thee on their brows. Alas for women as God's precious gift of gracious dispensation got by theft, a damning form of false and holy woes, the thief of God and man must have his fee, and woe John Legland, a special prince, begs it of England's banes before our sins. Fry traitor, coward, thief, I will should leave historical warning, tremble and abhorred, or dare to steal and stain the symbols of a law. Joy's Fleet by George Meredith Joy's fleet, so slow, laugh so sweet, so will so. Love that has flown, or days decline, love who have known, so be mine. Love is winged for two by George Meredith Love is winged for two, and the worst he withers, and the hearts are tight. But if they divide, O oh, too true, cracks the globe and feathers, feathers, feathers overgrown be strew. I was breast of morning sea, rosy plum on forest done. I have a love and rainy fleeces, while with me she made one. And I must pick up our pieces, for it went the wing weary. Love's grave, by George Meredith. Mark the pressing wind shoots javelin in life, its skeleton shadow on the broad black wave. Here's a fitting spot to dig love's grave. Here there were ponderous breakers plunge and strike, and that the hissing tons high up the sand. In hearing of the ocean and in sight of those ripped wind streaks running into white. For I the death of love had deeply planned, and never could have made it half so sure, as by the unblessed kisses which are braid the full waked sense, or failing that degrade. Tis morning, but no morning can restore what we have faded. I see no sin, a wrong is mixed, and tragic life, God what, thou will and need me. Passion spin the plot. We are betrayed by what is false within. Lucifer and Starlight by George Meredith On a starred night Prince Lucifer uprose. Tired of his dark dominion swung his fiend above a rolling bowl and cloud parts greened, where sin has hacked the spectra of repose. Poor prey to his hot fit of pride the woes. And now upon his western wing he leaned, now his huge bulk o'er Africa's sands careened. Now the black planet shadowed arctic snows. Sawing through wider zones that pricked his scars with memory of the old reward for more, 
I reach the middle height, at the stars which have a brain of heaven, he looked and sank. Round the ancient track marched, rank on rank, the army of an alterable law. Mother to Babe by George Meredith Fleck of sky you are, dropped through branches dark, or my little one my. Promise of a star, or poor of a lark, beam in song divine. See this precious gift, stepping a new birth, all my being, for sign earth to heaven can lift, heaven descend on earth, both on one be mine. Life and light you glass, and you peep and coo. You, my little one mine, booklet chirps the grass, daisy looks and you, up to dear sunshine. My theme, by George Meredith. Of me and of my theme, think what will wilt, a song of gladness one straight boat can shake. But I have never stood at fortune's back, where she and the light crew to run at lit, and my poor holding little would be split. Small the praise for sing o'er that wreck, who courts the dooms to strife his bended neck. A grasp the blade, but always by the heel, needless she strikes at random, can be feel with other than those with hair she deals, the black or brilliant from a thunder rift. I say but that this love of earth reveals a soul beside her own to quicken, quell, irradiate, and fruinous floods uplift. Nature and Life by George Meredith Leave the uproar, at a leap or shall strike a woodland path, enter silence, not of sleep, and the shadows, not of wrath. Breath which is the spirit's above, and the old beginnings find, then dove them with a mind, seed for seedling, swarf for swarf. That gives nature to us, this give we her, and so we kiss. Fruitful is it so, but here how within the shelf of art music sounds, now the near can to such a tremor start, the waves of life is part. By our running harvests beer, back to them for manful air, laying with the woodland's heart, that gives battle to us, this give we it, and good we kiss. On hearing the news from Venice, by George Meredith, no damp is he awake to the world to speak, and the voices hangs the world beside his briar. Our world sobs, our cry of praise a tear. We have a smitten mortal, we have a weak. We see a spirit on earth's loftiest peak shine, and ring hands the way he makes more clear. See a great tree of life that never see, drop leaf for aught that age or storms might wreck. Such ending is not death, such living shows what wide illumination brightness sheds from one weak heart to conquer man's old foes. To coward and the turned, and the force of all those weedy monsters raising heads, when sang as murk from springs of turbid sewers. On the danger of war, by George Meredith. A word high wisdom never vainly wooed, the threat of war that shows a land brain sick. The nations gain the pitch, their reform seems the reason they are ripe for cannon's foot. Dark looms the issue, for, for cause be good, but if doubt, this our old devil's trick. Or oh, now the downslope of a luniac, a loom lest we redden off a brood. For not since man in his first view of thee, as scanned to the heavens giving sign, within the deep sky and sounded sea, did he unforty fighting for laws transgress, and peril of his blood as ears incline, to drums whose loudness is the emptiness. On the tombstone of James Christopher Wilson, a George Meredith, O oh, beloved and light of earth has crossed the sea of darkness to the yonder shore. The dust for shining light transferred, not lost, for love to kindle now assaults the more. Outer and inner, by George Meredith. From trick to trick the spider weaves at noon is webbing fine, so near to mute as the fire's flute with only a leaflet's dance. The sun rose out of hazel leaves the smell of woodland wine, and like a swarm to sudden storm at any steps at once. Along my path is bugless blue, the star of fruit is moss. The fox loves drop from throat to top the daily lesser bell. The blackest shadow nurse of dew has orange skeins across, and keeny red is one thin thread that flashing seems to swell. The world I know the fancy comes minuets hushed observe, but busy bits of motion wits through alternate mosswork strife. But now so low the stillness hums my springs of seeing swerve, for half a bink to thrill and think the woods of nymphs alive. A neighbor the invisible, so close at my constant as only ask for spirits mast and leave from trees and flowers. And this because of whom my dwell and fort, while calmly bent to read the lines the earth designs should speak her life on ours. Except, she says, it's not hard in woods, but she in towns repeat except. And if we wept and have we quailed with fears, or shrunk with horrors, shall we ward the air from knowledge groans. O see and mould the rose unfold, the soul through blood and tears. 
Outside the crowd by George Meredith. To sit on history in an easy chair, still rivaling the white horns by whom it was wrecked. Sure, this beseems a race of laggard wit, unknown by those plain letters crawled on air. If more than hands and arms will be our share, snatched before substance we see vapors flit. I have not heard a vision infinite, and old men play the youth to chase the snare. Let us be belted athletes, matched for foes, or stand aloof for great benevolent, a lot of lands and robber birds annex. A justice holds the scales of pure intent, armed to support a sword. Least we compose the chapter for the historic word on Rex. Over the hills, by George Meredith. The old hound wags a shaggy tail, to know what he would say. It's over the hills we'll bound, old hound, over the hills and away. There's naught for us here save a cow on the clock and hang the head all day. Over the hills we'll bound, old hound, over the hills and away. Here among men we're like the deer, but yonder is our prey. So over the hills we'll bound, old hound, over the hills and away. The bockrick is master here, but he's of clay. So over the hills we'll bound, old hound, over the hills and away. Own racial signs smile, and men whom we may. And so over the hills we'll bound, old hound, over the hills and away. It's silly lads and cobbles when to pleasure wicked fay, as also in the heather the bone, old hound over the hills and away. The taunt glints under the roven red and shakes the bracken spray, or joy in the heather to bone, old hound over the hills and away. The sun burst brawn, and the heavy bed is purple and orange and grey. Away and away we bone, old hound over the hills and away. Progress by George Meredith. In progress you have little faith, say you. Man will maintain the interest, red base hates, by force and gentlewoman shoes the mates, most amorously from the gilded fighting crew. A human heart will on us mad hello, and in the fire to desiring with the fates. Now at this time, says history, those two states stood ready their past wrestling to renew. They sharpened arms and shout them like the brutes whose horns quiver. But a yellow blight fell on the waxing harvest. The third the bloody settlement of their disputes, the God shall bless them better. They did right, and naming progress, both shall have a word. Sense and spirit, by George Meredith. The senses loving earth, or well or ill, revel yet more the riddle of our lot. The mind is in their trembles, and lights not by trimming fear tales, nor does the will to find in nature things which less may chill, and ardors the desires unknowing wood. We will conceive for living, we go distraught, at best but circle wind sails of the mill. Seeing she lives, that the joy of life creatively has given us blood and breath, for in this war never won't unhealed. The gloom we bear forth for our battlefield, solves in the spirit, roared of her through strife, to read her own and trust her down to death. Society by George Meredith. Historic be the survey of our kind, and how their brave society took shape. Lion, wolf, vulture, fox, jackal, and ape. The strong of limb, the keen of nose, we find, who with some jars and harmony combined, the primal instincts taming to escape the borrowed indiscent, not passion's trait. Convenience prick conscious, that the mind. As entered they the field of milder beasts, which in some sort of civil order grace, do half homage to the god of laws. Have they still for their old ruinous feasts, earth gives the edifice they build no base. They spring in the flood of fangs and claws. Sorrow and choice by George Meredith. Bury thy sorrows, and they shall rise, their souls to the immortal skies, and they look down like mother's eyes. But let thy joys be fresh as flowers, that suck the honey of her showers, and bloom alike on huts and towers. So shall thy days be sweet and bright, solemn and sweet thy starry night, conscious of love each change of light. The stars will watch the flowers asleep, Flowers will feel the soft stars weep, and doubt will mix sensations deep. The feast below, the foes above, sits evermore the brooding dove, uniting both on bonds of love. For both by nature are kin, sow of yes and fruit of sin, and joy the juice of life within. Children of earth are we, and those the spirits of divine repose, death radiant are all human woes. Who think what then had been thy doom, if homeless and without a tomb, they had been left to haunt the gloom. Or think again what now we are, marvelly love for dim and far, image in every lustrous star. For way in their salvation now, stitch of the former bow, while through them all the heavens do flow. I sat of all wedded to the skies, watched by ever loving eyes, and warned by yearning sympathies. The Burden of Strength by George Meredith. 
If it for hast the gift of strength, another part is to uplift the trodden law. Else in a giant's crest until the end, a hopeless wrestler shall thy cell content. A crown of love, a torch meredith. Or might I load my arms with wheel like that young love of Romans who laughed and gained so gloriously the fair princess of France. Because he dared to laugh so high, he being had dear weight, should speed to where the mountain touched on sky, so have brought king decreed. And halting he must bear her on, nor pause space to gather breath, and the height she will be won, and she was won in death. Red the fast summit flames with morn, and the plain a glistening court surrounds the king a practice scorn for such a mask of sport. She leans into his arms, she lets her lovely shape clasp, he fears. God speed him whole, the knights make bets, the ladies lift soft prayers. Have you seen the dear chase? Have you seen the bolder kite? So boningly he runs the race, so wavering grows his flight. My lover, linger ye and slake the thirst, or me thou wilt not win. Seest thou the tumbled heavens, they break, they beckon us up and in. I hear her laugh, and lose my hold, and drop me like a cursed thing. Seest thou the crowded swords of gold, wave to us a rose and ring. Our death white mouth, or cast me down, or diest, and with thee I die. Seest thou the angels of a crown, the train have reached the sky. The death of winter by George Meredith. When April with her wild blue eye comes dancing over the grass, while the crimson buds so shy peep out to see her pass, as lightly she loses her showy locks and flutters her rainy wings. Laughingly stops to the glass of a stream and loosens and loops her hair by the gleam, while the young villagers blithe as the flocks grow frolic and round in rings. In winter he would tame the fly, and as on his back we purse to die, we cannot live longer under the sky. Down the valley's glittering green, down from the hills and snowy rills, he melts between the border sheen and leaves the flowery verges. He cannot choose but brighten the hues, and though he would creep, he fain must leave for the quick spring spirit urges. Down the vale and down the dale he leaps and lights, till his moments fail, bird and blossoms are red and pale, where sweet birds sing his dirges. The wind had lived life of wine, the frosty brown and icicled hun, and ever sung a whole life long with so delicious burial mine. Die and be bird, and so remain a wandering brook in April's train, fixing my dying eyes for eye on the dawning rose of maiden May. The Emperor Frederick of our time, by George Meredith. With Elfton and St. Louis he doth win, grander than crowned heads mortuary doom. His gentle hair folk manhood enters in the ever flowering common heart for home. A lesson of grief, by George Meredith. And ever the bitter herb we taste, which ages fall of heavy times, to blend us in the weeping waves, rings with our fellows with one heart, accordant shims. And I had shed my gladius a leaf that it believe I stood alone, till that great company of grief taught me to know his craving heart, for not my own. The main regret by George Meredith, seen to clear and historic of in us our sins of omission from when the autumn days strike us all ruthlessly bare. They of all mortal diseases find never healing physician, errors they of a soul past one hope to repair. Sunshine might we have been unto seed under soil, or have scattered seed to a scant such brighter than any that shun. Even the limb like beggar, a sick desperada has flattered, back to a half slaughtered life cheered by the burr human tone. The meeting by George Meredith. The old coach road through a common of firs, with knolls of pine ran wide. Berries of autumn, the thistles, burrs, and spider trees dropped in the light. The light in the thin blue veil appeared sick, the sheep grass close and still. The smoke of a farm by a yellow rig curled lazily under a hill. No fly shook around of a silver net, no insect was swift bird chased. Only two travellers moved and met across that hazy waste. One was a girl with a babe that froth, a ruin and a bliss. One was a youth of a lawless laugh, who clasped it the more for whiz. The girl for a babe hummed prayful speech, the youth was laughed at prey. Each cast a wistful look on each, and either went their way. The poetry of Coleridge by George Meredith. A brook glancing under green leaves, self-delighting, exulting and full of a gurgling melody ever renewed. Renewed for changes of heaven, and chasing in sunlight, and chasing in moonlight that hushed in the beams of holy orb. The Poetry of Keats by George Meredith The song of the nightingales in through a slumbrous valley Loaded it with twilight and trance of a dolorous sound Trance of a tender enchantment, the yearning of passion, winsome mortality, even while panting, delirious with death 
The poetry of Milton by George Meredith, like to some deep-chested organ whose grand inspiration, serenely majestic in utterance, lofty and calm, interprets the mortals with melody great as its burthen, in musical harmonies chiming forever thrown for bright spheres. The poetry of Shakespeare by George Meredith, pictures some isle smiling green with a white foaming ocean, full of old woods, leafy wisdoms, and frolicsome phrase, passions and patrons, sweet love singing bird like a bowfit, life in all shapes, aims and fates, is warmed by one great human heart. The poetry of Shelley, by George Meredith, ceased for a sky like whose glistening winglets is kending, quiver like pulses bend of a melodious dawn, deep in the heart yearning distance of heaven it flutters, wisdom and beauty and love of a treasure that brings down at eve. The poetry of Sophie by George Meredith, keenness and eagles fly towards the dim, fury and fearless of toil of Hedigo ever royally winds, vast in the cloud-coloured robes of a balm-breathing orient, love grand epic advances, unfolding the humanest truth. The poetry of Spencer by George Meredith, lakes where the sunshine is mystic with splendour and softness, wails to sweet life as old summer with golden romance, forests that glimmer with twilight around rather bright palaces, here in our Mayblood we wonder, carrying amongst ladies and knights. The poetry of Wordsworth by George Meredith, a breath of the mountains, fresh born in the regions majestic, but look of her eye dang summits deep into the sky, a voice of great nature, sublime with her lofty conceptions, yet earnest and simple as any sweet child of a green lowly whale. The promise and disturbance by George Meredith, how low when angels fall the black to skinned, a prime of thunder tales, known as the pain of music, that knife frowning wisdom went, and when faults now cast baleful to the insane, nor seems the language heard of love as rain to make a mire where fruitfulness was meant, like holding heart gives out a jangled strain, like a world from heaven's omnipotent. But listen in the thought, so many will come conception of a newly added court, commanding space beyond where ear has come, and labor of a trouble at its fount leads life to an intelligible lord, wherever the courts of a sacred mount. The Riddle for Man by George Meredith This riddle ready or die, since history since a flood to warn us sons of power. It can be truth, it can be lie, be parasite or twist of rye. But draw the vampire for your blood, the fountain of a silver flower. A brand allure, a web a crest, stubble of wax or tempered steel. A spur to honor, a snake a nest, this is you will with it to deal, to work upon the breast, or tremble under heel. And ready you not a ride, says nature, as still in red, shall history's tale be writ. For sole of us your lead or light, the trailing chapters she must ride, and pass my fiery test of death, a living through the furnace pit. This linking from whom a softer hold, in grip of brood and brood remain, of whom a woeful tale is told, of a one short satanic reign, the body celebs to mould, the souls behold the plain. The Spirit of Shakespeare by George Meredith, a greatest new beam of our earth, and soon he knew thy sons, a prop from hell to hell of human passions, but of love they flowered, his wisdom was not, for he knew we well. Whence came the honeyed corner at his lips, a conquering smile where in the spirit sails, calm as the court who the white sea wave whips, yet full of speech and intershifting tales, close mirrors of us, whence had he the love we feel as vine, brought us ten thousand beefs at pasture. Whence thy songs would we not have from grain, with sick philosophies last leaves the world, if I have no response way and forced to fatten earth when from a soul divorced. The state of age by George Meredith, rub over battered limbs, no claim no beg on us from all about we. Light we young, a frame is as a dusty mantle hung or grey one, pendant on a loosened peg. Ward for this or life an ancient egg or a tough bird, or has the rudderless tongue turning dead trifles like of dung, which runs times contrast to a halting leg. Nature, it is most sure, not we admires, but has one by seasons set a fires to burn from self to spirit for the lash, all of the sons of earth shall hold we high. Here to spread light within the proud litter, I drops prone and void as any thoughtless dash. The Free Maidens by George Meredith. There were three maidens met on the highway, the sun was down, the night was late, and two sang aloud for the birds of May, of a nightingale is merry with its mate. Said they to the youngest, Rock you were so still, but in this dark the night is late, or the heart in my side is ill, and the nightingale will anguish for its mate. 
Safely to the youngest of lovers' fair store, the moon winds up the night is late, or I shall look on men no more, and the nightingale is dumb without its mate. Safely to the youngest, and cross your arms and sing, the moon winds high, the night is late, or my dear lover can hear no thing, the nightingale sings only to its mate. We slew him in revenge, and his true love was his lure. The moon is pale, the night is late, his grave is shallow on the moor, of a nightingale is dying for its mate. His blood is on his breast, and the moss roots at his hair. The moon is chill, the night is late, but I will lie beside him where, of a nightingale is dying for its mate. The Warning by George Meredith We have seen mighty men ballooning high, till another moment bump the ground. He falls, and in his measurement is found to count some inches of a common fry. It was not enough to send him climbing sky, it was enough above his fellow's crown, and he less panted. Let this faithful hound bark at the tractors, and may walk or lie. Concerns it must ourselves who for our gas, his little eyes and set here be greed for continents filled to inflation burst, so the ripe nations into squalor pass, and driven as herds by their old private first, we scorn the brain's wide search for virtuous light. The wild rose by George Meredith High comes June's wild rose, bush her blooms in a swarm, and swift from the bud she blows. In a day when the wool is warm, frankly receive and give, her bosom is open to be in sun, pride she has none, nor shame she knows, happy to live. And like a voice of a garden I, a queenly sisters in front by art, losing petals one by one until the fiery passion starts, superbly shy. A whim in some glory of hair, or nest of the heaving moans to lie, or path of bridge be strew. Ever are they the theme for song, but naught of it is her share. Hardly from wayfarers trembling along, a glance of care not to renew. And she at a word of the claims of kin shrinks to the level of roads and meds. She is only a plain princess of the weeds, as an outcast witless of sin. Much disregarded, save by the few who love her, but has not a spot of deceit, a promise of sweet beyond sweet, often the scanning to song. On any fair breast she would die in an hour. Praises she scare could be here, but any wild poet to praise. Her aim is to rise into light and air, one of the darlings of earth no more, and little it seems in the dusty ways, unless the grass is nodding beneath, bird clapping wings to saw, the clothes of an even tighter wreath. The World's Advance by George Meredith Judge mightly the tasked world, and disincline the branded, for it bears a heavy peck. He hath by chance observed the in bride's trick at night when he has quitted the inn sign. He placed diversions on the homeward line, Still will we bend and bite his legs as slack. A hedge may take him, but he turns not back, nor turns this burdened world of curve and spine. Spire, the memorable lady terms her minds as Kent. A world's advance presents that figure on a flat, a way of warmth. He cherish the promise of his good intents, and warn it not when instinct is a face, and reason ripes for the vacant place. The years had worn the season's belt by George Meredith. The years had worn the season's belt from but a rosy prime, since Nelly by the lark pole nailed and helped the hop to climb. Most diligent of teachers when, but now of all to learn, she proved beyond the thought of man, a form to make men burn. She dwelt where twixt low beaten fawns, to mill blades like a snail, enormous with inquiring horns, looked down on half a whale. You know the grey of dew on grass, of the young sun fired, you know well the first one has for the coming and desire. Quick in our ring she leapt, and gave a hand to left to right, No claim on her had any, save to feed the joy of sight. For man and maid a laughing word she tossed, and notes as clear as when a February bird sings out that spring is near. Of what we fell behind that scone, that none who knows we reel, a better day she might have been a heron rosing steel. On us did she bestow the hour, and fixed it firm and fond, a spirit like a meadow flower, that gives an ask for naught. She seemed to make the sunlight stay and shower in its pride, and she was fair as a beach in May of the sun on the yonder side. Where was more life than breath can give, and the looks in a fair form, for the can be say we live until the heart is warm. The Youthful Quest by George Meredith As the Lady Queen of Woods for meat, in wonders day and night, the leaves have whisperings discreet, the mossy ways invite. Across a lustrous ring of space, the covered hoods and caves as promise of a secret face, and film it onward waves. For darkness is the light a strain, a strain for light the dark, a grey moth down a larger's lane, and winds a ghostly spark. A lamp is seized, and young desire, as fed for cloaking she flies, 
she quiver shot a violet fire to ash that look of ice. To a friend lost by George Meredith. And I remember, friend, whom lost I call, because the man beloved is taken hence, and in a humor at the fire of sense in your good eyes, are full of heart for all, and chiefly for the weaker by the wall, you bore with lamp of sane benevolence. When see around you death his shadows dense divide, at your feet his emblems fall. For surely are you one of the white host, spirits whose memories are vital air, for the great love of earth ahead. Now we slack beams with from the path on tossing seas, can bid us fear we keep them in the ghost, partake us of a strife we join to share. To a nightingale, my George Meredith, a nightingale, who has for learned the out of the nested dove, when land of a bow of a fern hangs burned in a cloud who was above. Rich lie as many a sky, with splendid dim that thou mightst him, and make rejoice of her wondrous voice, and refill of her wild pervading tone. But instead of to woo, was learned to coo. The song is mute at the mellowing fruit, and the dirge of the flowers is sung by the owls in silence at twilight above. O nightingale, tis this, tis this, that makes thee mock the dove. And as thou hast passed the marriage bliss to another parent's love, the waves of fern may fade and burn, the grass may fall, the flowers and all, and the pine smells of the oak dead float on the drowsy and the doors wings, but woe will do nothing but coo. Bring the nest with the brooding breast, midst with young from a future song, round whom the future sings. To a Skylark by George Meredith. O Skylark, I see thee and call thee joy. A ring spear we up to the breast of the dawn. I see thee no more, but a song is still, a ton of the heavens to me. Was are the days when I was a boy? Sweet while I lived in them, they now were gone. I feel them no longer, but still are still, the tell of the heavens to me. To Robin Redbreast by George Meredith. Merrily, mid the faded leaves, a robin of a bright red breast. Cheerily over the autumn east, they notice heard the bony bird. Send to cheer us and kindly endear us, the world will be a sorrowful time, for the in the weltering climb. Merrily unwound the bows of the lime, while the fadeless waistcoat glows on the breast, and autumn's reddest livery dressed. A merry song, a cherry song. The bogs above, on the sward below, chirping and singing the life day long, of the maple and grief sheds its fire leaf, and other trees warning, the bitter complaining, chestnut and elm and sycamore, catch the white gust in their arms and roar, like the sea on a stormy shore, till wailfully we wail let it go, and weep themselves naked and weary with woe. Merrily, cheerily, joyously still, puts out a crimson crest at height, a set of a season burns bright on the hill, a foliage dead falls yellow and red. Picturing vainly, but foretelling plainly, the wealth of cottage warmth that comes, and the frost gleams and the blood numbs, and then bony robin that spread we out crumbs, the garden pork for the red breast pride, the song on the ensign of dear fireside. Twilight music by George Meredith. Know you the low, perverting breeze that softly sings in the trembling leaves of twilight trees, as if the wind were dreaming on its wings? And if you mark the still degrees of having melody, like the strings of silver harp swept by a spirit's hand, in some strange glimmering land, mid gushing springs and glistenings of waters and of planets white and grand, and if you mark in that still time the chariots of folk's shining cars brighten upon the hushing dark, and bend to hark the voice, and the poplar and the lime pause in the dilating lustre of several cluster, pause but to renew its sweetness, deepest dreams of heaven to sow its with sleep. And felt despite of drawing wars, when day is done and dead, the sun still a voice divine can sing, still as their sympathy can bring a whisper from the stars. With this sentience quickly will you know, how like a tree I tremble to the tones of your sweet voice, how keenly I rejoice when in with the sweet motion slow, the spiritual music absent moans. Life's in the lustre of those heavenly eyes, dies in the light of its own paradise, dies and relieves eternal from its death, and mortal melodies in each deep breath. Sweep through my being, bring up to be myself a weight of its eternity, to nerve to life from its order of fire, it marries music with a human lyre, blending divine delight with loveliest desire. Unknown Fair Faces by George Meredith. For I am faithful to my love's lift through, and place them among memory's great stars, that burns a face like Hesper, one like Mars, as the arches I get a moment's view. Sweet eyes that in the heaven of me too is scant, a virgin to my life a past. Thou weas within my destiny seem the last, at times so bright, with that hope for new. A gracious, freckled lady, tall and grave, went shawl of numerous and wide, and last sunset by, going so the glance. 
I was too poor to hold a second chance. I will not ask for more than fortune gave. Margie goes from never from my sight. Violets, a George Meredith. Violets, shy violets. How many hearts of you compare? Or hide themselves in thickest green, and when unseen, rare the enraptured air of sweetness to you fresh and rare. O violets, a shy violets. Human hearts to me should be viewed as violets in the grass, and as I pass, or do us in sweet imagery, or wait on mine and glen me. When I would imagine a George Meredith, when I would image her features, comes up a shrouded head, and touch the outlines, a shrinking, she seems of a wandering dead. And then love asks for nothing and lies on his bed of snow, but where he slips under my eyelids, all in its living alow. Like a dark cathedral city whose spires and domes and towers quiver the violet lightnings or so bars on for hours. Whimper of sympathy by George Meredith. Hawk or shriek has done the steed of downy fevers. Rueful sight, sweet sentimentalist, invite your bosom's power to intercede. So hard it seems that one must bleed because another needs will bite. Around you find cold nature's light, the feelings of a totter need. Out of a pleasure with you, to fly from the tussle of foes, the shambles, charnacle of a wrinkle, to dwell in your dribble of dew on the cheek of your sovereign rose, and live the young life of a twinkle. Winter heavens, by George Meredith. Sharp as the night, but stars for frosty life leap of a rim of earth across the dome. It is a night to make the heavens a home, more than the nest where to a pace we strive. Lynn stone or road each fire tree seems a heave and swarms out rushing from the golden comb. The waking waves of thoughts that burst to foam, the living throb in me, the dead revive. Your mental clothes as their past mortal breath left glistens on a river of death. It folds as flesh and dust, and have we nailed or never nailed, or eyed as kindly springs of radiance, radiance and rings, and this is the soul's haven to have failed. Woodman and Echo by George Meredith. Close echo hears the woodman's axe to double on it as in glee, for clap of hands and the legs of meaning in a river tea. For all shall fall, as one has done, the tree of me, of we the tree, and unto all the fate we wait, we reveal the wheels when we run. We tower to flower, we spread for shade, we drop for crop, at length for late. A road and mold from chop and lop, and are we thick in woodland tracks, or tempting of our statue we, the end is one, we do but wax for service of our land and sea. The strike, the like shall thus of us, my brawny woodman claim the tax. The foe will blow, the wood be good, and shriekingly give it him by cracks. The ground we crown shall speed the seed of younger into swelling sex. For use we use to make a waker's bird of its stuffy bee. Our earth of mirth and tears he clears, for braver little minds agree, and when will men within them win an echo-clapping harmony. Youth and Age by George Meredith once I was part of a music I heard, and the bores are sweet between earth and sky. For joy of a beating of rings on high, my heart shot into the breast of a bird. I hear it now, and I see it fly, and alive and wrinkles again is stirred. My heart shoots into the breast of a bird, as it will, for she laughed at the last long sigh. 